So you're a programmer with no talent for art, but you're willing to give it a shot. I was in that position a while back. Surprisingly for some, you don't really need talent to make decent pixel art. Pixel art, and actually a lot of art in general, is made up of patterns and soft rules. When you view it from this perspective, it makes it a lot more approachable for programmers. And while these patterns and soft rules may vary, consistency is the most important factor. Consistency itself can make or break the aesthetics of a game. Not base good art assets and stuff like that. It's all about how it comes together. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you're making pixel art for a game, you really have to think about the overall aesthetic and learn about that more so than individual assets. As an example, if you take an asset pack and slap it onto a realistic background like I see a lot of people doing when they're new and they don't want to draw stuff, it'll look very out of place and completely wrong. And as another example, you can take very low resolution pixel art and make it look pretty decent and cohesive as a game. This is my game Alchemic Archer. It was actually made within 48 hours for the Alka Jam. When you're working with this few pixels, there's like 5 pixels to display, it's easy to copy, and the style can be extremely consistent. I believe that pretty much anyone can pick up a style like this with a little bit of practice. And when you're working at low resolutions like this, you don't have to make that many assets either. It doesn't take that many pixels to populate your game. Consistency in itself comes down to things like scale, palettes, pixel patterns, and style. When I say scale, I'm mostly talking about the scale of your pixel art relative to other parts of pixel art in whatever scene you're creating. Some people will try to have some assets larger and some assets smaller instead of having things on a perfect pixel grid. And just so you really know what you're doing, I'd recommend that you just keep everything on the same scale and on the same grid. This is especially important for beginners. When I say pixel patterns, I'm referring to things like dithering or just in general shading patterns. These can get pretty subjective, but with enough practice you'll get the idea. In general, if you make a bunch of assets, you'll usually maintain the similar pixel patterns in your own work. Learning other people's patterns is a different challenge though. Style in itself is also made up of pixel patterns, palettes, all sorts of things, and good shapes as well. And while bending style rules is subjective, a clean baseline is not. You can have a very basic pattern for how you do things that can follow fairly objective rules. With consistency out of the way, let's move on to the basics. Pretty much every video like this one will tell you the following. Start with low resolutions with your pixel art and work your way up to higher resolutions. As a side note, at higher resolutions, standard art techniques start to apply even more, which is worth looking into. Start with very restrictive palettes with a couple colors and work your way up to larger palettes. If you make a palette, do not oversaturate it. Do not pillow shade, which is where you shade just the edges of an object. The pillow shading happens when you've got a light source pointed directly at whatever you're drawing. Most of the time you'll want it coming from a different angle like the top or something like that. Similarly, do not use one pixel wide shadows. This is something people do a lot in pillow shading, but sometimes people do this outside of it. If you know what you're doing, this is appropriate, but new people tend to go overkill with this. Don't use automated aliasing. This is like normal brushes and stuff like that that are used for non-pixel art. Tools do not matter, you can even use MS Paint if you want. MS Paint is fine for lower resolution stuff as long as you're not animating. Once you get up to the higher resolutions, you're going to want something that has a decent brush, like a sprite or something, and animation also needs dedicated tools. And finally, save as PNG, don't save as JPEG, JPEG is lossy. And now that I've gone through the basics, I can move on to colors. The easy solution to colors is to just use a palette. There's tons of palettes that you can use on a website called lowspec.com. I'd recommend you doing this when you're getting started, but eventually it'll feel restrictive, so you may want to make your own palette. Personally, I haven't entirely figured it out. Here are some of the basic rules I follow. Don't make colors that are too similar, especially colors that border each other on your assets. Have a clear distinction between the colors used for shadows and highlights, instead of using a linear change in color. It's okay to break this, but just be careful with that. When you use different colors of different brightness for shadows and highlights, make sure that you also shift the hue. There are some cases where you don't have to, as with all things that's subjective, but generally you'll want to shift the hue of it, that is the kind of overall color, like red, green, blue, whatever, so that 
it's not just lightness changing. If you just change lightness, it'll look a little bit muddy. Don't be afraid of saturation for vibrant visuals, but don't overdo it. Saturation can be very good, it tends to draw attention, but if you saturate everything, everything's going to draw attention and it'll kind of give people a headache. Typically you'll saturate the things that are important or things that are just nice to draw attention to. A lack of contrast in general also leads to a muddy look, so be careful about that. Bordering objects or bordering colors in assets need to have changes in lightness. Even if song's a different color, a lot of times it can clash visually and look odd. So just keep in mind that boarding things should have different lightness. And once again, this is not a hard rule, but it's something decent to go by when you're getting started, especially for games. As for using contrast to draw visual attention, this can actually be done on a larger scale or within a couple pixels. The idea of contrast itself can include hue, saturation, or value. It can be any one of those elements. Although I do recommend following the thing I just stated before where you want bordering objects or colors in an asset to have varying lightness. As a general rule for platformers, I like to keep my backgrounds with only a little bit of contrast and way less saturated than my foreground so that it doesn't draw people's attention too much. You want the players looking at the foreground, you don't want them staring off at the background during crucial moments. Now that I've gone over colors a bit, I'd recommend that to improve your pixel art, it's very important to reference others. Do not be afraid to copy people's style. This is the main way you'll improve, or at least that's the way I improved. I started off by learning the styles of Daniel Linson and RxI, who were working on very low resolutions. The patterns they used and the colors they used were very easy to copy and create somewhat similar looking stuff. I wouldn't say my stuff was as good as theirs, but it still looked visually cohesive. Learning a style comes down to learning all of the small patterns that make up that style. Style includes the way pixels are grouped, the colors that are used, and the overall shape of the objects. So you'll need to keep these attributes in mind when you're trying to pick up someone else's style. Nowadays I tend to reference games like Nigra, Eagle Island, or Eastward. This is because I have moved up to higher resolutions from my earlier games, which were only a few pixels. Learning to draw at higher resolutions does tend to be a harder process than drawing at lower resolutions. Also, it requires more work for a game because you've got to spend longer drawing your assets. It's a general rule for pixel art that the higher your resolution, the more time you're going to spend on your assets. This is because pixel art is generally defined by the idea that you put attention to each individual pixel. Unlike normal art, where it's more about the overall shapes and lines and whatnot instead of the individual pixels. If you study my style from some of my older games, you'll find that I had a style of using blobs, I would say. And that style is very easy to emulate. The part that differentiates style copying from general copying is your ability to make new pieces of artwork without breaking consistency. This can be difficult to do, but you'll get better with practice. As stated before, I recommend slowly increasing your resolution, copying styles, and increasing your palette as you learn. If your consistency breaks, you've gone too far. And as a final summary, I've broken down the core concepts into a couple points to remember. One, keep drawing. You won't get any good without enough practice. Two, consistency is everything. If you're making a game, don't push yourself past where your consistency starts to break. Go down to 8x8 tiles with 3 color palettes if you have to. It's okay to break consistency a little while learning, but if you're trying to make a decent product or something, you're going to want to make sure you're consistent. 3. Never forget that you can make a visually good game with just good visual effects and a consistent visual style. 4. It's not about talent, it's about a willingness to learn.